Welcome to Commander Tune-Ups. In today's video, we're taking a Camball Council of Allocations deck and tuning up for Jeff. We're going to be mastering the art of the old drain and gain. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. And I'm your host, Beezy. And that makes us the nitpicking nerds. Eh. <laughs> oh, and be sure to subscribe to us because we're ranking every single commander that's ever existed in the history of the universe. Yeah, and you want to keep up with that series. And besides, you want to be subscribed to our channel because our subscribers have a 10% longer lifespan. Disclaimer, subscribing to the Nipping Nerds will not affect your lifespan. Okay. Anyone who believes otherwise is just wrong. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. would have died 10 years sooner and 10 however long lives are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what are we doing? This is uh, Commander Tune-Ups where our viewers submit decks to us and we upgrade them under a certain budget. $150 is our budget and right now. That budget means cards that we added to the deck? Yes. Total $150. I believe we're really, that's like almost on a dot. We almost hit $150 on the dot. There is a deck that we are looking at. And from that, $150 to add to it, not to make a deck. Yes, exactly. Tuning up. Let's read Kambal, Console of Allocation. Uh, he is one white, black, for two, three, he's a human duder. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, they lose two life and you gain two life. The old draining game. The old draining game, as BZ likes to call it. This deck, it's all about gaining life. It's all about making- It's not just a taxi deck. Or this is a tribal life gain deck. Yeah, this is a tribal life gain deck, which is the main thing. Uh, that's what we're doing. We're gonna gain life, we're gonna use that life. And that's what this deck does. And we're gonna talk about a lot of cards in those categories because that's what does. So let's, so start let's, with gain, the let's gain life, I guess. Uh, yeah, let's start with gaining life. So we got Soul Warden and Suture Priest. I chose not to add the third copy of this. Soul's Attendant? Soul's Attendant. I think that Soul Warden, Suture Priest is... Suture Priest is the best one. Is a, I think For so. sure. Suture Priest is the best one. Uh, Soul Warden is Is fine. one of them. Is one of them. And it's like you could have a third one, but I just don't think this deck needed another one. So I left the other one out. That's fair. Blood Artist, Cruel Celebrant. Creatures are dying. We're profiting. Yeah. And I mean, more draining gains. Blood is, in this deck, Blood Artist is better than uh, Cruel Celebrant because... You want to kill their stuff sometimes. Because, the, yeah, more of their stuff's going to be dying, and you only have... Hopefully, like, am I right? If all goes well. And you only have, like, 25 creatures, so Cruel Celebrant is good. You're still going to get a, a decent amount of triggers. triggers and start draining them away. Like, I can get behind it. I can get behind it. Uh, the most ubiquitous, like, draining game card ever, Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Of course it has to be in here. Of course. Yeah, the card is just good. I mean, Grey Merchant is just... It's a silly rate. It, yeah, it's so good. It just it drains all your opponents, and you get all that life back. It was Perfect. Back when magic cards were worded good for commander, they were worded f in the the awesome way that gives us cool cards. Like this card isn't broken. This card isn't broken at all. This Extort, card, the mechanic is not broken. Come on, wizards. Yeah, it's, but wizards back. is super worried about wording cards like that. Now they want it to be like, you drain everyone for one life, and then you, you gain, gain one life. life. Who wants to do that? Why can't you just gain three? Yeah. It's like I like. I we talk about this every time too. I know this is sad. It was just one mana white drop. Uh, in commander. Uh, would, uh, you mean six? Six, uh, six life gainer every turn? I think I just said it was a one drop, but uh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Sarah sent it. Ah, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. This is actually both a payoff and a... The payoff is, are you playing magic? All right, cool. Well, well you get to gain six life every turn. Yeah, so you has, it's uh, obviously it's a one one, but if you have 30... 30 or more life. 30 or more life, which is is always turns out you start with in Commander. I don't know how this deck would uh, not have 30 six, or more. Six, six flying lifelink. Uh, Boop, boop. And it gains life every single people, time. Like, it's so annoying. Plus, this deck's gonna stay over 30. Like, some decks fall. Oh, always? Like, always with this deck. If yeah. you, always. Uh, BZ's favorite card? I love It's not my favorite card. I just really like it. Noxious Gearhold. Four black black for a 5 4 menace. ETB. Uh, Merc a thing, and then you gain life equal to its toughness. Merc a thing. Merc a thing. Nah. Could you imagine if magic was worded like that? Like, I would not play. They, I don't know. It might be. It might, like, if it was understandable, it'd be funny. It'd be like, if it's a, when Noxious Girl enters the battle forward, Merc a thing. Merc a thing, you, you get- You gain life equal to it's the thing's toughness. You get to that thing's toughness. The thing's butt. It would say thing's butt. The, to that thing's butt, yeah. Like, that's great. I like that. Right, so that's our Magical Christmas Land magic wording. Uh, but Noxious Girl is like, it's not the cheapest way to kill something. But you get that But it's life. really cool. It's an actual, the body's actually relevant. It's an evasive body. You can pick off a Planeswalker with it or take the Monarchy or whatever else we say. Yeah, take the monarchy with it. <laughs> Always take the monarchy. That's all we ever do. Uh, we have some extort cards. Do we? We have Blind Obedience, Thrall Parasite, Pontiff of Blight, and Cryptgast. All these cards have extort. Now you might say, Cryptgast? All right, I get that one. But why are you playing the other three? Well, first of all, Blind Obedience is also good. But why are you playing the other two? Uh, so Pontiff is all your creatures. It, so you can like extort like Doubles up. Like literally all your spells become X spells that drain them. Yeah, if you, you can play like a soul ring 
And like just drain six like mana. Six, yeah. And <laughs> you gain six life when they lose a total of 18. Uh, or whatever it is. Pontiff was already in the deck because there's a card that didn't cut. There was, oh, it was there, okay. There was other cuts that you made. Uh, Thrall. Parasite. Pa Parasite is in the deck because he was playing both Tithe Drinker and Kingpin's Pet. And I'm like, well, these are just cheap extort creatures. Yeah. But if you're going to play a cheap extort creature, just play the one mana extort creature. Yeah. Number one, this does more than those ever could hope to. Yes. And number two, it's just cheaper. For yeah. If you're playing a nothing that is just an enchantment that has an extort on it. Yeah, which is basically. And that's why Blind Obedience is so good. It's an actual good effect on a cheap enchantment with extort. Yep. Uh, Single Mancer. I love this card. If you're making anyone discard, if you're making anyone kill stuff all the time, this card gains you like uh, like 30 plus life. Ooh, this deck also, because so you play your Sanger Mancer out, then you get to play your three mana board wipe, the one we were talking about literally in our last video. Yes. Uh, you got um, uh, Revelation. What's the next card? Uh, I was at Ghost Council. This is a card. So this is a card so that I'm like. I'm not even a huge fan of this guy. He's so slow, but he hits pretty hard, I guess. He, this guy came in the deck. Uh, he comes like the thing I like about this card is so I don't like effects that usually when you have to go around the whole table, but like he's he can't be removed in that go around. So at least you're going to get him, and then you get him as a five five big body. Right. He has to, he can only die to instant speed removal, but if you ever want a board wipe, he's kind of just stuck. Yeah. He, he goes away. If you want a board wipe, but make ever, convince everyone else to board wipe. Yeah, <laughs> and then you're fine. <laughs> Then you're fine, you just go forever with this odds of that. Uh, so, how about some life gain payoffs now? By payoffs, I mean ways to use all that life we just gained. That's what a life gain payoff is. Kinda. Yeah, I would say whenever you gain life is a life gain payoff. But also, pay but also paying life is a life gain payoff inherently. That's what I'm saying. But like, the when you think life gain payoff, the first thing I think of is whenever you gain life. No, that's not what I think. That's just like, like combat payoff. Whenever you a creature you control deals combat damage to a player. But ah, life game payoffs. Okay. Uh, Necropotence and Moonlight's Bargain. So Necropotence is, if you've watched this channel for any more than one episode, you've heard you know the, that we love that card because it's actually just busted and I'm not really 100% sure why it's legal. Yep, the card is absolutely insane. It should, if you're playing black and... No, nope, yeah, if you're playing black. If you're playing black, you should play Necropotence. This card's insane. And, and also, don't play Phyrexian Arena while we're here. Yep, we cut... Uh, don't worry, I actually cut Phyrexian oh, from yeah. the stack for Necropotence. Love it. Uh, Moonlight's Bargain is a really cool card. It's Why don't you read it? It's three black bat black. Uh, reveal the top five cards of your library. Uh, for each carriage, you can pay two life and put it in your hand. Otherwise, it's put in your graveyard. It's kind of like Ad Nauseam. Uh, it's cool because it's just like... It's mini Ad Nauseam. Yeah, you get... There's just so many cards that you can just pay, put them in your hand. There's extra lands you don't want. I would want. say so many cards. There's any cards. <laughs> it's, it's a cool card. Uh, I thought this card was really cool. That's why I put it in the It's like deck. the black factor fiction. If if we weren't on a budget, th that card would be... Actually, it would be Ad Nauseam. Yeah, Ad Nauseam is so expensive. Yeah, it's it, like twenty five dollars. Yeah, it's really expensive. Heck? So that's your budget. You can upgrade it to ad nauseum when you're ready. Yep. It, yeah, it absolutely should be ad nauseum eventually. Placeholder. Place. All right, what's next? Uh, we have Bona Butcher of Megan of Megan. Butcher of Megan. That's what I always I, when I read it. It says Megan. Butcher, I butcher Megan. <laughs> that's not what they said in the show. <laughs> no, they let's butcher Megan. <laughs> yeah, Josh, sounds great. Okay, she's uh, five out of four four, and you can tap her and pay seven life. They're freaking just murking any non land permanent. More murking. More uh, murking. Yeah, Bona lets you, she, you're going to have a lot of extra life in this deck because that's what this deck does. And you just get to, if you untap with her, you're just killing whatever you want. Plus, she has lifelink, so she's gaining for you that life back if she has a way to get through. She's actually really good with um, that five minute artifact that can untap things. Paradox. Oh. Oh, no. Ooh, too soon. Too soon. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> what was it? Eilie, Eternal Pilgrim, 2 3 for 2. Pay one and sacrifice a creature and gain life equal to its toughness. And then if you have, this is like the deck where this would ever come up, you can pay three and if you have uh, 50 or more life, you can sack a creature, I think, and you exile not that permanent. I had to decide which category to put this in because she both gains life and is a payoff for gaining life. I like the payoffs. I like the payoffs. She, she's awesome. Uh, this one's interesting. Do you know what this card does? This card's really cool. It's 2-4-4, four, four, Cliffhaven Vampire. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. Yeah, I'm, it's, you're just, it just, it adds on to the trigger of Campbell. So if you have both Campbell and him out, it's just, you're just, Getting more yeah, drinks, like, more drinks. Oh, uh, you lose three? You lose three, you lose one, you lose one. I love Erebos, God of the Dead so much. It's such a good card. The ability to stop your opponents from gaining life is, like, it almost always comes up for it's me. It's super, Not that my opponent's super like, trying to life gain, just, oh, you would have residually gained life, you just don't. Yeah, it's, uh, it's sure. super strong. It's, On my greed? Okay, I'll take that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can become I like, a five-seven beater? I'll take that. I like this card so much better than greed. Oh, and it's indestructible. All right, cool, put it in the deck. Yeah, there's so many reasons to play it. Uh, Absolutely awesome. Uh, Karlov. Uncle oh, Carl! So every time you're getting life, Carl's getting counters. Carl is a freaking tank. You can remove those counters and start 
Pew, 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 you want the only pew, playable pew, version pew, of a Johnny's Pride Mate? It's this one. Yeah, no. A Johnny's Pride Mate, don't like that card. Basically any card that has, whenever you gain life, put a counter on it. Except for Archangel of Thune, because it's different. Because every creature gets a counter right, on that's it. That's way different, and even that card's like, okay, but... Karlov gets huge, and he freaking exiles creatures if you want, too. Yeah, like, he gets he, real big, he starts he exiling creatures. If you have enough mana, he can basically just plague win them. He's not so weird. I mean, he just—he's no Uncle Carol. He's Uncle Carl. He's yeah. dead now. He's Uncle Carl. Rest his soul. Uncle Coco. He's Carl. double dead now. He is double dead. The real one's dead, and the fake one's yeah, dead. Yeah, like he went to the world of Coco, and then he died, went to the underworld, and then got forgotten. So now he's like gone. Oh, he's hyper dead. Coco we, reference. No, but we can remember him. <laughs> Who? I don't know. Who are we talking about? Oh, yeah, so this I, deck has 99 cards in it. I'm not sure why. Uh, I remember Donna. We Donna of Hope. Wait, we were talking about Donna of Hope. That's what we we're talking about. Yeah. So, this is cool. Card's cool. Whenever you gain life, you can pay one to draw a card. And pay you two can, to draw a card. Pay two. And you pay three to white to make a one-one life link. Yeah, that's not as relevant. We're, it's we're a mana sink. If you don't have, if you have nothing better to do, make a chump blocker, pressure a planeswalker, get the monarchy. <laughs> always. <laughs> I want to say every creature can do that from now on. <laughs> you always get the monarchy. Uh, well of Lost Dreams. Whenever you gain life. You can pay X for X, up to X for X is the life you gained. The life you gained. Cards. Yeah. I mean, heck yeah. This oh. is so expensive and so clunky, but if you untap with it, you're in the business. It's a, it's a great mana seek. And Sagwin Bond's in this deck. Uh, whenever you're getting life, your opponents are losing life. Is the other one in here? Uh, unfortunately not. Too expensive. Uh, it was too expensive. I chose to put in a card coming up in the win the game category over it. Yes. Uh, quick mention on Dawn of Hope. It falls under a category of cards that can just have human names. This is Dawn of Hope. <laughs> She's oh, a legendary creature, Dawn yeah, of we, Hope. We love doing that. The legendary creature, Dawn of Hope. I love, I love that too. All right. Oh, Death of the Deathless and Exsanguinate. Those are really good win cons. Yes. For winning the game. Death of the Deathless, Exsanguinate. Uh, this deck also just came with Cabal Coffers Urborg, so it could just... <laughs> it came with it. Like, we got it in the mail. <laughs> it came with it. Wow, sweet. I don't have to buy those. Yeah, you, we didn't basically, have to... Basically. We, we didn't have to add those to this deck. And Smothering oh. Tithe. Such a good magic card. You, you know all about that by now. Well. Smothering Tithe is insane. If you don't know it's insane, it's insane. It's insane. Uh, <sighs> why would you describe that card? These next two cards, though, are insane. <laughs> this is like the combo kill, if you can protect them. Test of Endurance and Felidar Sovereign. If you have... 50 or 40 life, respectively, in your upkeep, you just win. Enchantments Straight are up. Enchantments get pretty tough to answer sometimes. Uh, Fellers Heaven, I specifically put uh, Swift Foot Boots in this deck. Just to have just to have that little extra. Just to have like, that one like little extra way of potentially protecting it. If, if you get into the, the higher budget, you can have things like uh, Teferi's Protection. Or even like, if you really wanted to put some way to give your guys Hexproof for Indestructible, you could. Uh, so... Yeah. It's better off to just try to ramp into this earlier than play it later, and it's like it's just a threat they have to answer, uh, or else they literally lose. Speaking of gourmet bagels, we have a triple bagel. Uh, no, one a of double the, bagel. There's a single bagel. Okay, yeah, that's fair. That card, you know, what card it is. That you card, know, what card it's a life gain deck. That card is ridiculous. In a life gain deck, that card's ridiculous. It's nonsense. You don't have to pay. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. Except play your game. Yeah. Uh, Boss of Citadel. This card has done nothing but surprise me every single time I play it. And draw a million cards. It's. Absolutely insane. Especially and if your deck's packed full of tutors, though. In an average deck, it's it's good. It's Yeah, it's good. And if you have ways to manipulate the top of your deck with like something like, I don't know, Sensei's Divining Top. Or if you just play cards like Vampiric Tutor. Yeah, put the card on top of your deck. What card? Uh, I said Ball of Citadel. Yeah, what card do you put on top of your deck? Oh, uh, I try Vampiric Tutor? Yeah. I put top on top of my deck. Okay, but what are you trying to hit? And then I'm trying to find either Fox Wise Wire Oh, there. the Gourmet Bagel, the best card of the entire deck. Ball of Citadel. Are you kidding me? You thought it was Citadel? I think Bolas of Citadel. Are you delusional? Bolas of Citadel. Aetherflux Reservoir is so much better in a life gain deck than Bolas of Citadel. Are you crazy? But Bolas of Citadel is a gourmet bagel. No way! It's Aetherflux Reservoir. You gotta be kidding. No. You're trolling me. No! You're trolling me! Bolas of Citadel! All this deck does is get up to like 100. And you're telling me the card that just says pay 50 merc somebody is not the best card in the deck? No, I'm telling you, Bolas of Citadel is the best card in the deck. Not even close. Oh, we have Aetherflux Reservoir. We have a split gourmet bagel. Split bagel. I don't. I thought it was so obvious, and we were both talking about Aetherflux Reservoir. I thought it was so obvious we were both talking about Bolas of Citadel. Are you kidding me? Okay, let us know in the comments, like, I want to actually have a vote. Okay, that's fair. Like, maybe we'll do a Twitter poll, too, because you know what? you're so wrong. <laughs> Let's, this is a perfect discussion for our podcast coming out tomorrow. Yeah, I'm sure it'll carry over, which oh. one's better. Oh, it but definitely will. The card, the combo is insane. You can pay one life to draw with top, but when you cast top off top of your library after you drew a card, Aetherflux Reservoir gains you seven, eight, however many spells you cast, so it goes infinite and gain infinite life. Paying everybody for 50 as many times as you want. Yep. Win the game. Well, right. not literally infinite, but... Oh, I didn't even know this card was in the deck. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, I actually Two added... in a row? I, I chose to add this card. We to added this card. I know. Made Me. him a believer. We made him a believer. The man who never wants to play this card ever and was such a hater on it. Uh, approach Second Son. What does it do? Uh, so you can... Six white sorcery. Uh, when you cast it, if it's the first time it's being cast, you gain seven life. Put it in seven from the top. Yeah. Uh, but if it's being cast a second time from your hand, yes. then instead of gaining seven life, you win the game. I like winning the game. Yeah, me too. I like winning the game. Uh, the reason I like it in, the, in this deck specifically is because if you're gonna, if you can get up to a hundred like life and make yourself like this, that's fair. If you're playing meta without time, infinites, this is actually pretty good in here. Yeah, because it's like if it's the, they're not killing you. Like even if three players are coming after you, if they're attack, if you wipe the board and then you approach the second sun, it's sometimes what's hard to kill you. Sometimes with Kembal, if you're playing against a storm deck, and they go, oh, we have to kill him now. How are you supposed to do that with Kembal out? <laughs> You, you gotta know, answer Cam Ball first. I like how you talk about not going. You're saying if you're in a. No, no, no. If you're not going infinite, then you do that. But if you are going infinite and you're playing against a Storm deck, they still can't kill you yeah, with Cam Ball out. They'll just die. That's way too taxing. So the general ad cut discussion now that we're done with winning the game. Yeah, so that's how we're winning the game. Uh, also, if you want to add eventually an Exsanguid Bond? What? An exquisite Bond. If you want to add an Exsanguid Bond. Exquisite Bond. If you want to add an Exquisite Bond after. Exquisite Blood? Exquisite Blood. Oh, God. Exquisite Blood. If you Sorry. want to add Exquisite Blood to this deck, that is the other card that needs to be added. Uh, well, it doesn't need to be added. It you also just take out Sanguine Bond, because I'm not even really a huge fan of that anyway. Like I, that combo. It's so clunky. I, I feel like it's clunky, but I feel like in your life, you can actually... I feel like when you have Philidar Sovereign and Test of Endurance, like, you can just you go for that. You don't need it. Okay, fair maybe, enough. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not the expert on this. Added a Ghost Quarter. Added a Miri Landscape. I love Miri Landscape. I'm going to put it everywhere. Card's uh, insane. Uh, Ghost Quarter... Uh, I feel like every single deck should have a way to deal with lands. I, you really need one. It's it's frustrating, but it's just how it is. So you really should. Don't play Field of Ruin. Uh, Somebody who's playing Field of Ruin, just don't play that card. Yeah, don't play Field of Ruin. If you don't know how the card's worded, all you, everybody gets a basic land. Right. Everybody. Even the two people that were not involved in this exchange. Uh, I could all the taxing the attackers cards, which I wasn't yeah, a fan of. No, like, Ghostly Prison is not for this deck. I don't think. There was like five of them. And I think Archangel of Tides is just kind of bad. There was also like Norn's Annex. Yeah, Norn's Annex is like. It's not worth the mana. You're never going to get your card back on that. And it gives your opponents a choice. It's like, I wouldn't play Ghostly Prison. I definitely wouldn't play Ghostly Prison that gives my opponents a choice. My thing is, with all these cards, they're not worth a card. No, you just can't get your card back. You, you, exactly. You can never get your card back. Card of Giants Primate, we don't we like that card. We don't like that card. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe in the notes it says, me and BZ hate that card. <laughs> well, hate is a strong word. It's really cool and limited. And it's bad everywhere else. I was talking about this when I talked to you. I sent you a text, and I was like, it's weird, because that card's really good and limited. Has synergy, and yet I think it should be in almost no decks. I don't think it belongs in EDH at all. It's just like super weird. Yeah, there's not too many cards like that. Yeah, that's, that's... So they have some synergy, but they belong nowhere. <laughs> just yeah. not a powerful effect, I guess. When your synergy makes you just a big vanilla. I mean, yeah, because like Karlov, Karlov, who gets double the amount of counters and has an ability on it, is good. the same mana cost. For the same mana cost. Like, just play that. Just play that. Sun Titan. He's in. He's in. <laughs> the great Sun Titan. I mean, if I see a white deck without a Sun Titan, I put in a Sun Titan. It's one of those cards. I mean, and maybe that's. It's like one of the. I'm a simple man. I see a deck without Sun Titan. I add Sun Titan. Yeah, I'm a simple man. I love me a Sun Titan. Sure, it's a good card. It's rampant white, too. Love Sun Titan. Oh, he's so good. And we mentioned, get your Phyrexian Arenas out of there. Go spend less money than you spend on your Phyrexian Arena for a Necropotence, mm -hmm. and go realize how absolutely ridiculous that card is. Oh, it's insane. Wait until you play it. You will see. It and is in insane. In this deck, even in decks that don't gain life, I have it in a couple of decks, and I just go, I'll pay sixteen. I pay I pay a ridiculously greedy amount of life every time, because it's it's stupid. Sometimes me and BC sit down and play against each other, and like you get to play like when you play one on one. Sometimes, which we don't do often, we do sometimes. Oh but yeah, if I play one on one, I'm paying twenty. A competitive, uh, yeah, we call it competitive necropotence, where it's like yeah. I'll draw thirty. It's just like <laughs> why wouldn't I? Or if you just whip the board and, and you know your opponent's decks and they're like combo decks, pay twenty. So in conclusion, the cards insane. We're gaining a lot of life in this deck. Kambal's really sweet. Um, I actually have considered building a Kambal deck, but I haven't because of my, one of my personal friends has a Kambal deck. Ken, you may have seen him on Chance, of, Chance for Glory. Chance. His, his ugly for mug. Glory. Uh, which has been canceled. Uh, oh, what? <laughs> I thought we got renewed for three seasons. Damn it. Oh my gosh. The network. The, the network. network canceled us. The Emmy network. Uh, Special shout outs to our 15 patrons. Love you all. These people are great. They make this show happen week to week. Not if, even close, baby. If you would like to be I'm loved by the nitpicking nerds, absolutely loved. And which, join our Discord, where you can talk literally to us yes, directly. You can, yes. Our Discord does let you talk to us, which is great. That's how Discord works. Who doesn't want to talk to us? Hopefully not. 
Hopefully all of you want to talk to us. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash user forward slash nitpicking nerds. We're heading out because... We gotta go to FNM. We're actually going to FNM. Now you know when we recorded this video. It was seven Fridays ago. Peace out, Dreamscout. <laughs>